Hey, hey thanks, thanks and uh, welcome. welcome. Uh, we're going to be doing building modern applications, uh, or at least modern Android applications using Xamarin. Uh, I'm John Douglas. I'm a senior program manager over the mobile dev tools. Uh, I've worked with Xamarin since about 2013 or so, so I've been kind of around uh, in some way, or shape, or form. So if you aren't familiar with uh, Xamarin, Xamarin's app architecture is quite unique compared to some other approaches. You have three different uh, UI layers or framework layers with regards to iOS using C Sharp, Android using C Sharp, and you have the .NET framework using C Sharp. And this kind of all encompasses into a shared C Sharp layer, which you can include all of your business logic, all of your platform APIs, and even your whole user interface, such as using Xamarin Forms or other MVVM frameworks. Uh, if you want to get started with Xamarin, of course, we have awesome docs, .net.microsoft.com doc, slash apps slash Xamarin, and uh, you can get started there. We'll kind of cover this as well uh, while we're going through this presentation. But what I want to focus on is the Android section. And if you're familiar, you know, this fall, of course, we had a new iOS drop, we had a new Android drop, and I just kind of want to talk about some of the new features and uh, show you how you can get started with those today. So Android 10. Android 10, which was released earlier this September, uh, it's Google's latest operating system. And hopefully, if you have an Android device today, you've updated to it. Uh, you know, let me know your feedback if you like Android 10 or not. Uh, like I said earlier, it was released in September. Uh, this is kind of, you know, a, a yearly life cycle with Android releases, usually one per year, uh, sometimes two. But uh, this release includes quite a bit of support. So like iOS, it includes a dark mode. Uh, however, Android is a little bit more unique and includes foldables. So devices that allow you to fold and, uh, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen some of those reviews, but there's some pretty cool foldables out on the market today, and it's still in the, only in its infancy. You also have some support for some privacy improvements. And what this really is, is just making sure that your data is at the forefront of your decisions rather than apps using your data in you know, potentially malicious ways. Uh, there's also gesture navigation. So they're kind of trying to move away from the, the hardware buttons, if you're familiar with that. You can now do a lot of navigation just via gestures, similar to iOS. Uh, there's a lot of notification improvements. Uh, if you haven't seen some of those improvements, they're uh, allowing you to do more actions within notifications and quick replies and the likes. Uh, Android 10 also includes TLS 1.3 and also improve security with biometrics. So better biometric support, uh, so you can get your hands onto that, literally. Uh, and there's so much more. This is only the, the tip of the iceberg. But uh, you can kind of see some of the various features here. Dark theme, just kind of get a, a dark theme on all of your apps. You can opt into it, apps that support dark theme. Uh, it's a quick little add-on that you can add into your app today. You also have gesture navigation, which is a cool little uh, uh, ability to just like swipe your finger and exit out of the app, swipe up, those type of things. And then foldable support again, uh, similar, you can just be able to fold your device, kind of like a, a Palm Pilot 2.0, I guess. So I want to talk about Jetpack. And Android Jetpack is a new kind of collection of recommended packages to build high quality mobile applications with. So uh, what, what kind of happened was there was all these open source projects, uh, a lot of different you know, packages that are just like, oh, that, that's a must have in this app, or this, that's a must have in this app. And Google kind of took a step back and said, well, let's actually just create a suite of recommended packages that you know are highly testable, uh, you know, app store quality, whatever you uh, you can figure there. But uh, they kind of come in four different categories. Uh, the first one being kind of architecture components. We're going to cover that a little bit later. But these are kind of the packages that help uh, 
add anything to like an architecture. So they added a new thing called View Model, uh, allows you to do an MVVM pattern within Android. Uh, they also allow some different architecture components that allow you to have better uh, life, cy life cycle uh, uh, dependencies uh, and, and the like. So you can actually add events onto various life cycle events within Activity, Fragment, and the likes. Uh, there's also like Work Manager, which is Kind of a cross platform or a cross uh, API way of doing services. So if you are familiar with Android services, uh, it, it does get complicated, but we'll go into that a little bit later. You also have a UI section. This is going to be anything that is UI uh, driven. So like think of like a recycler view, maybe a view pager, and the likes. There's also a foundation package, which is basically all the things that are kind of required for most apps today. Uh, we won't get too much into that just because they're kind of a, a default package. And there's also behaviors. So behaviors are more of like, how do you want your app, your app to interact? Do you want animations? Do you want emoji support? Those type of things. And again, uh, I mentioned earlier, every collection is backwards compatible uh, and also limits uh, any of the uh, boilerplate code that you might have to deal with. So uh, Android X libraries. So I talked about Jetpack and Jetpack being a collection of Android X libraries, but Android X is much more than a recommended uh, collection. Uh, Android X is the successor to the Android support library. And if you aren't familiar with what the Android support library is, this is kind of the first effort to create a library that really supported the Android framework. And this was back in 2011. So this has come about eight years uh, to kind of, you know, make this a little bit more simple and even refined and uh, actually rethought. So uh, one distinction here is that it's known as Android extensions. And that's not to be confused with Android 10, uh, you know, if you were to use like a Roman numeral X. So this is kind of one of those points where uh, it's an extension onto the Android framework. So they uh, basically took a step back and made huge improvements. So one huge thing was uh, coherent package naming was one of the biggest uh, issues. There used to be a, a package convention such as support v7, app compat v7, or sorry, support v4, app compat v7, and the likes. And those used to mean that they were supported all the way back to API 4 or API 7. And now there's really none of that to, they have to worry about. Uh, you also uh, have each package, and they are separa uh, separately maintained. And what that means is that you just have a better uh, life cycle with regards to the development of features on those and also the you know servicing and the likes. Previously, they were all updated in one huge sweep, and that wasn't too frequently. And again, as I mentioned, features just get added as they pertain to each package. And all of these uh, Android X packages are available on NuGet when you use Xamarin, so you can find them uh, easily. You don't have to worry about the support libraries anymore. You can go straight to Android X instead. And so, uh, talking about Android X packages, uh, all your favorite packages like Fragment, App Compat, Recycler View, and the likes, they now just come into a Jetpack collection or as a standalone Android X package. So as you may see from this list, you might see that foundation includes an app compat package, a wearable OS package, uh, architecture includes that work manager, that view model, and room, and the likes. So they kind of are broken down into that way. Uh, when it comes to Android X, you might already have the Android support library installed in your uh, project. And what this really requires is a migration. So we have a migration package available on NuGet that basically will take your support library packages and uh, move them over slash migrate them to an Android X equivalent. 
This doesn't capture the whole migration progress or uh, process, but the IDE also has Visual Studio also has a one-time migration tooling that is available in the 16.4 and 8.4 previews. That's for Visual Studio or Visual Studio for Mac. And what that will do is if your package had the old support namespaces within your project, it'll just migrate all those to the Android X equivalent and make sure that you can just get started and work on your app. So let's talk about material components before we jump into some of the other Jetpack areas. So material components are based off of material design. And what is material design, you may ask? Well, material design is a, a visual language that basically takes all of these classic uh, principles of good design and just tries to keep up with the pace of technology. That's kind of it as a nutshell. But uh, some of the things that really influence material design is that it's inspired by the physical world and all the textures. So if you think of like a piece of paper, how does a piece of paper uh, sit on a desk? Is there is there some like elevation? Is there some shadowing? You know, those type of things. So really it's about how the surfaces interact. How does the light reflect, the shadows, all those different things. Uh, another big concept is that material design is very bold, graphic, and intentional. So what that means is that there's very bright colors, very bold colors. Uh, all of the typ typography uh, is intentional. All the grids are used wisely. The space, there's plenty of white space and the likes. And then kind of like the last main concept, although there's many concepts around material design, is that motion provides meaning. So as you're interacting with an app, you're going to get feedback regarding, you know, did something uh, do a transition on me? Can I go backwards with this gesture? Uh, can I tap on this button and see feedback of it rippling and the likes? Uh, and last but not least, uh, material design is cross-platform. What that means is it's it's just a design philosophy that can be applied to really everything. So if you think of material design, you'll see Google apps that look consistent on all platforms, the web, iOS, and Android. And it all kind of stemmed from Android. So material components, however, uh, material components are a collection of just these beautiful reusable controls that uh, Google has provided that are based off of material design. And really, you can use these as the interactive building blocks for all of your Android user interfaces. And the cool part about material components is you're going to have a beautiful app while using them. And they're also backwards compatible to a API 14. And API 14, for those uh, who don't know, it's, it's pretty old nowadays, uh, which means that you're going to be able to support probably 98 to 100% of the modern day market. And again, these are available on NuGet if you do want to get, get those. And we'll show the links at the end. But you can kind of see some cool little, you'll see all the various motion being done on this sample and, and the likes where you hit something, you can see that feedback, where you go to a new page, you see that you transitioned and the likes. But let's talk about architecture components now. So architecture components I mentioned earlier are kind of one of those four areas. And it's really just a collection of libraries to design like very testable and maintainable apps. And you know, previously it was very difficult to do testing and the likes on Android, uh, especially with various uh, ways that you would manage your life cycles and the likes. But uh, this is an Android oriented approach to like data persistence and the management of all those components. So they added a few different types of libraries here. So one popular one known as Room, which is a SQLite mapping library. And there's a lot of ways that you can do a SQLite, uh, like ORM or object relational mapper. Um, but Room does a pretty good job and it's very performant. Uh, next is view model. So, you know, if you come from the .NET world, you know, view model is pretty much already a baked concept and it's been around for a while, or at least MVVM has been that standard for a while. This is just a, 
a special class within the architecture components that allows you to basically have a view model that already stores like the U the UI data and also can persist on a configuration change. So you don't have to really worry about a lot of that boilerplate code as you would if you rolled your own uh, MVVM uh, framework within Xamarin. Uh, and then you have like lifecycle and lifecycle again kind of manages your activity and fragment life cycles. This has been a really hard thing to manage uh, historically speaking. So like what happens when the activity uh, rotates? What happens when the activity is destroyed? What happens when the fragments paused? You know, these different life cycle events and the likes. Again, these are all available on NuGet so you can get started. Uh, Android app bundles. So one cool thing about Android app bundles is that the Android app bundle is a new packaging format created by Google to really uh, become the successor to the APK. And although it's not quite a successor because it generates APKs, it's the new file format that Google is going to expect you to upload uh, and so that you can deploy your applications on the Google Play Store. So what the app bundle does is it generates an optimized APK based on the bundle, your device, and uh, some of your device settings, such as you know your locale, uh, the language, the uh, CPU, and the likes, just to kind of understand what you need within that APK. It's also known as an AAB, or a dot Android app bundle. And uh, what this does is this enables what's called Google Play Dynamic Delivery. And Google Play Dynamic Delivery will just generate a custom APK based off of all those things I mentioned before. So instead of having this huge APK package that you put on the Play Store and it can support every single device, every language, and every architecture and the likes, you can still do that with a very large app bundle. However, the app bundle is only going to uh, generate an APK that will match your user at the current time. So if they, you know, we'll, we'll go to an example in a second here. And then uh, kind of the next thing that's being done here is you can also support dynamic features within your app. So if you want uh, your users to be able to download features in your app, uh, such as, you know, for example, you just want a slim version of your app, but if they, you know, you you paid, they paid money, and then you wanted them to download new features, you can do that now, which is kind of cool because previously you'd have like a light version of your app on the App Store, and then a paid version and the likes. And of course, you can still do that, but this kind of makes it a little bit easier to potentially monetize your applications. So going back to the Android app bundle. Uh, here's a here's a quick example. Say you had a specific language, uh, you had a specific size of your phone, and you also had an ABI or basically your architecture. And you know, well, you're like, okay, well, I'm gonna download this app from the App Store. Well, once I do that, uh, Google Play Dynamic Delivery is going to generate an an APK that has all the items that you require from your device. So for example, you might have an ARM64 device. Uh, you might need to support English and French. Uh, this device uh, supports pretty high quality resources. And then it just has the base of your app. So basically your app with all the various items on top. The cool thing about Android app bundles though is it really reduces the size of the APK that the user is going to install. That is huge for uh, a lot of different areas where data might be limited. You might be on a 3G connection. You might go to the app store and see that this application is over f like 50 megabytes. Well, if you're like me, you probably won't download that right at the spot because that's a lot of data. So instead, this can really shave uh, those packages sizes to be quite small, uh, close to, I'd say, 15 to 20 megabytes instead for most cases. And uh, it's pretty powerful. But uh, last but not least, I do want to talk about C Sharp 8 support. And starting with uh, Mono 6.0, uh, C Sharp 8 support kind of already landed. And 
there continually had a support support added in 16 or 6.2 and 6.4 and those are mono versions but this includes support for you know default interface methods noble reference types async streams and quite a bit more but the cool part about this is that this is included in Xamarin Android 10.0 and above uh, which includes that mono 6.4 version. So if you want to use C# 8 support or if you want to use C# 8 today within Xamarin, all you have to do is update to the latest stable and uh, you can get that today. Uh, there's also .NET standard 2.1 so Xamarin Android 10.0 now supports uh, .NET Standard 2.1. So it includes all those added types from the 2.0 to 2.1 uh, release. And uh, last, <laughs> really, last but not least, uh, all this, all that we talked about and the likes, it's either on NuGet today or it's included within Xamarin Android 10.0, which you can get within Visual Studio 16.3 or Visual Studio for Mac 8.3. So again, that's that's Android 10, App Bundles, Android X Packages, Material Components, .NET Standard 2.1, and C Sharp 8 support. And if you want to get started today, you can go to visualstudio.microsoft.com slash downloads and download Visual Studio or Visual Studio for Mac. Thanks. Perfect. Let me change over here. So if so we, we do, do have a, a, maybe five, five minutes, minutes, we can, we can take, take uh, some, some questions, questions and the likes. likes. Yeah, so, um, oh, actually, there's a great question here. I um, From, I can't read it, uh, Akbai. Uh, look, he says, look, or he or she says, looking at new phones, do you have any advantages for use as, as a test device? Sorry, John, I, muted. <laughs> I was muted over here. So again, I'm trying no to work four buttons. Uh, yeah, so the question is, looking at new phones, do you have any advantage for use as a test device? Uh, yeah, yeah, so, so when, when it comes, it comes to, to new phones, phones uh, uh, this is I've been an Android developer for almost a decade now. Uh, when it comes to buying a new phone and the likes, really, I think the best phones are the Pixel suite of devices, just because they get over the air updates. Uh, however, if you're on a budget, uh, it's pretty affordable to go to like any store, buy a $50 phone on eBay or Walmart or something like that, and that will get you by for you know a year or two of updates. Gotcha. Um, from earlier on, there was a question about is material is material design the child of skeuomorphic and metro? Uh, uh, I don't believe it's the child. I think it was mostly driven by uh, Google research efforts and kind of the trend around Metro and flat and all these various design patterns that were kind of going on back in the early 2000s. Okay, we're having a little bit issue with your uh, with your Skype connection. It kind of showed, it kind of, you kind of flickered a little bit. Could you repeat that answer again? Or, or, or statement again? Absolutely. Yeah, so uh, for material design, it's been kind of a Google research effort for a long time before it ever was announced. And uh, it was kind of a collection of seeing the trends with regards to like Metro, Flat, and all the various other design patterns that were kind of being thrown around uh, uh, back in like the early 2000s, late 2000s and the likes. It's, it's been, been around, around for a while, while now, now, though. Okay, cool. So um, let me ask you this. This is more of my question. So I'm an ASP.NET yeah, yeah. developer. Mm -hmm. And um, so what would you recommend for me to try to make a jump to start doing some mobile development, whether it be with iOS or with Android, using Samsung? Sure. Yeah, yeah so, so if you were kind of like an ASP.NET developer, .NET developer, you might have experience using XAML and the likes. Uh, Xamarin Forms is a great way to get started. It's a way to... It's a way to build a cross-platform application using one code base, uh, but you get to have iOS, Android, and it more with regards to what you want to target. That's one way to start. Um, however, if you're kind of interested in mobile development, you can also get started using, say, the native toolkits and the ways of building apps similar to what you would do with 
Xcode or Android Studio. But you can do that all using .NET and C Sharp instead. That's a, that's a great answer. So let me ask you this. What's in, is it better, and this is more of like, I would say a preference question, mm -hmm. to do some of the development in, on Mac OS or in Windows? Obviously with Windows you have Visual Studio, and obviously in Mac OS you have Visual Studio for Mac. So is, is there a mm -hmm. preference of coming from, um, from either yeah. side? Yeah, yeah so, so the, the best thing to do, uh, of course, is, you know, determine your situation. If you want to be building applications for Mac uh, or iOS, you're going to need a Mac of some sort to kind of use the Xcode tooling. But uh, if you want to get started with Android, you can do that on either platform. So it really just depends on what you prefer. Um, Windows is a great environment, and Mac's also a great environment. Uh, the, be the beauty with cross-platform uh, frameworks is you can do them on either. You can actually go between uh, both if you want it as well. So it just depends on what device you, you want to use and, and the likes. Perfect. Thank you so much. If anybody has any more questions, we still have some time left here But John. Um, Kendra, what, what do you have any questions? No? I do not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, John, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to um, speak, speak with us. And uh, where, where can we download uh, that again? Some of the uh, uh, visualstudio.microsoft.com slash downloads to get started with Xamarin. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going we're gonna to finish up here and we're going to get the next speaker rocking and rolling. Thank you so much, John. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.